Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Foxshore 12 volt 8 amp battery charger for lead acid batteries. It will also do 24 volt batteries but at 4 amps instead of 8 amps because it's going to be um, double the voltage. You're going to get half the amperage capacity uh, for it. So this is a really good battery charger. I'm really happy with it. Um, here is the box that it comes in. As you can see it also comes in blue in addition to the yellow. And this is a smart charger, so you never have to worry about overcharging, undercharging, any issues like that. I'll go over the features in a minute. But then after that, we're going to turn on the unit and see what the display looks like while it's charging. I'm going to connect it to my 35 amp hour batteries I have here. Uh, these are really good size for this uh, charger. It'll charge up in a relatively quick uh, time. If you have a big truck battery or something, it will take a lot longer if it's totally depleted because this is going to put maximum out of uh, 8 amps per hour. So you're looking at all night for a, a bigger battery. Um, this is a 35 amp hour battery. These are Neptune batteries. They got off of Amazon for about 65 bucks. Highly recommend. These have a nominal voltage of, uh, after they're charged and after they've been sitting, even for a day, over 13 volts, right around 13 volts, 13.1, which is pretty amazing. All my other lead acid batteries are around 12.8 when fully charged. So I uh, highly recommend those uh, Viking batteries. They're really good. All right, so let's uh, get into the features here. All right, oh, here's the uh, manual. It comes with the manual as well. And what's really cool, it's uh, in six different languages and it's in color. You don't normally see that on reasonably priced uh, items like this. Um, Amazon has these for under 30 bucks, so really reasonably priced. But what does it do? Let's take a look at the features here. A uh, high efficiency, it's a three-stage microprocessor smart charger. Um, it charges uh, based on voltage if it's uh, in very cold weather or very hot weather it'll adjust the uh, charging uh, parameters that will optimize the charging for the battery temperature that it is um, well it's not actually the battery it's going to be the temperature that the charger recognizes there's no remote sensor or anything like that it has reverse polarity protection sort circuit uh, circuit protection uh, sparks free contact so it's not going to spark when you connect these uh, up to it it's uh, capable of rechar uh, recharging severely discharged or heavily sulfated batteries because it does have a repair feature. It'll recognize what's going on. And then one of the options on here, I'll show you that, is um, for repair. And I think it could take up to 24 hours for that. Some of the specs on here is uh, it's 100 to 240 volts. Um, I guess you just need an adapter for the plug if it's not 110 for the US because it'll do up to 240 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. 240 is usually 50. Um, the output voltage is 12 and 24 as mentioned. Uh, the output is 13.8. That's when it's nominal. That's without the charging feature on, you know, with no load on it. Uh, it the maximum is 130 watts it's going to draw. So that's what would be going to your house. Um, uh, electricity that you're paying for would be about 130 watts when it's uh, maximum 8 amps going through there. Um, when there's no load on it, it's only 3.2 watts, so it doesn't take very much when it's sitting idle. The cooling is done by a fan, and you can listen how loud the fan is. It's not that loud, and it's not that quiet either. If you're in the same room with it for 10 hours a day, it could be annoying, so I'd say put it somewhere else in the room that you're in if, if that bothers you. Uh, and the size is... It's all in millimeters, 170 by 98 by 58 millimeters. You can see the size right here based on my hand. It's not that big. Uh, what else we got in here? The LCD uh, display, we're going we're gonna to go over that. But the display is going to show the charger inside temperature, the charge voltage, the charge current, the repair mode, whether it's on or off. When the charge is complete, it'll have winter and summer mode icons. And it also have a error if there's something wrong with the setup or with the battery itself. There'll be indications for 12 and 24 volt, and it'll show the battery capacity with little bars, and we'll and we'll get to that. Um, so, what kind of batteries will this charge? This will charge um, bigger, small batteries. Um, it's going to be for AGM or calcium batteries. There's a motorcycle setting for smaller batteries, and that's if you pick motorcycle, that's how you select the slow charge. And the charge current maximum on that is going to be 1.5 amps, and then there's going to be a repair mode. 
All right, so um, let me just show you here. Here's the, uh, you know, what the colors look like and everything. And here's the six different languages. So the languages that the manual is in, which is only like three pages long, is going to be English, German, uh, French, Spanish, Italian, and Russian. So that's pretty cool. So that's the manual. All right, so let's uh, hook this baby up and we'll see what the LCD display while it's charging. Okay, so now I'm hooking up with the negative to negative and positive to uh, positive here. Right away, you want to hit the correct mode, which is uh, AGM for these type of batteries. There's the fan noise, if you can hear it. Well, the clips, by the way, are really strong um, and, and fairly nice, strong, efficient clips. I like these clips. Very well done. We're going to zoom in on the screen here. And we'll take a look at what it's doing. So the battery is uh, depleted pretty well. Maybe 20% under. So it's putting in 5.7 amps. If this was totally depleted or below 50%, which you, you shouldn't go below 50% on lead acid batteries. Um, or you'll decrease the number of years that they're going to be good. Here we see that it's showing the temperature and I can't change it to Fahrenheit, so it's going to be in uh, Celsius. 15 degrees is temperature. There we have 14.1. That's the current charging voltage. You can see the little hand pointing to the 12 volt. So that's a 12 volt battery. And then you can see the battery is charging from 40% on upwards. Uh, to show that the capacity is a little less than half. I thought I had more in there than that, but um, so I don't know how accurate that is, but it's showing that it has some charge to it and then it's um, charged, that's the charging symbol as it's doing that, which means it's gonna go to 100%. Temperature's going up a little bit. It doesn't go up much. The current is coming down because it's getting fully charged. So it's not that discharged if it's going that fast. It, it'll be eight amps for quite a while if it was um, if it was fully depleted or really depleted a lot. All right, let me show you the LCD with all the under, uh, I'm not gonna bring up everything on the screen, it's not possible. So I'll just show you a picture of it from the manual here. So this is all the possible things that could be on the screen. That's what it would look like if any of those come up. So you see, you see the winter and summer symbol there. Those will come on when uh, the temperature of the charger, you leave that out like in a car battery outside or something. And if it's uh, below a certain temperature above, it'll be in the manual what those temperatures are. Uh, but if it's below a certain temperature, it'll go into winter mode charging, which is safe for the battery. And the same if it's very warm or hot above a certain temperature. And then you can see C, V, and A. So right now it's on A for amps and there's the temperature. And so it cycles through and there's the volt. So that's just showing all the stuff that's there. All right, so that's what the screen looks like. Listen to the fan for a minute. So right here you're pushing this and it goes, cycles through the different modes here. Oop. So we have car and truck, that's for really big batteries. AGM batteries is a different kind of battery, like these gel cells here. And then we got the motorcycle battery. And the motorcycle is gonna be a wet battery and so is the car and truck. The one with the hydrochloric acid liquid in there. They're usually sealed though. I don't think you have to top them off anymore. And there's a repair mode. You put it on there if you get an error on the battery and you're gonna to try to um, repair it there. All right, I think that's about it on the review of this charger. Highly recommend. Let's show, um, I didn't do this yet. Let's show what's on uh, the rest of the charger, what it actually looks like. Let's back it up a little bit. Let's show the case and stuff like that. Uh, so it's got uh, rubberized over the plastic. The, pla the plastic seems pretty rugged. Here on the cord we have a, a stress relief here. Nice display, very easy to see. Very simple, you just turn it on, pick the, pick the uh, battery type and you're done. It doesn't do lithium batteries, so don't get this if you, if you want to do lithium. And there's the back. So this didn't have feet, it was sliding all around. That's uh, one of the downsides to it. You know, this is hard plastic. It really doesn't do anything. So I put some feet on here, rubber bumper feet. You can get those uh, Home Depot or something or online. 
I have them on a lot of my things. So I, I usually buy them in bulk and put them on a lot of stuff. Because I do ham radio, as you can see in the background. Um, so I put feet on it. Uh, nice cord, nice thick cord for, for charging. 110 cord on the other side, stress relief, the same thing. You might have noticed I have Anderson power poles. That's what these are called. Um, all my radios, all my equipment, anything 12 volt has Anderson power poles on these. And um, there's no on or off switch, so I'm just going to unplug it. takes a few seconds for it to shut off that's funny um, and as long as it's connected to the battery you're gonna have power going to it now this is an Anderson power pole and it just plugs it in and out very convenient what I did was I cut the cord and I installed this uh, in the middle of it because my batteries as you can see let me back it up a little bit as you can see right here I have Anderson's can I move this over a little bit Right here, I have Anderson's connected to my batteries. All my batteries, all my radios, all my power supplies, all my chargers, they all have this. So I could plug anything into anything pretty much. Okay, so that's it for my review of the Fox Shure 12 volt, 24 volt, 8 amp smart charger for lead acid batteries. I give it a big thumbs up. I haven't had any problems with this charger. It does everything I wanted to do. I had a battery, I had uh, two batteries that were kind of older and they lost a lot of their capacity and I did a repair on them and it kind of brought them back to life. I'm using them in my shed now. So that feature works pretty well uh, as well. All right, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time here on Ham Radio Comms. Please like, like and subscribe if you like what you see and we'll catch you next time. Take care.